Hey YouTube friends, this is Shane Long with Shane Long Photography and for over the last month now, I have been using the Canon EOS R5 at weddings, senior portraits, engagement sessions, sports, and water sports. I'm a stills photographer based in Minnesota and Florida and this camera has met or exceeded all of my expectations. If you're at all interested in the Canon EOS R5, today I'm gonna take you along to some of the shoots I've done, show you the behind the scenes for the last month and help you decide if this is the camera for you. A few things I'm gonna cover in this video are the EVF, the low light focus ability, the IBIS, and the subject tracking along with so much more. I'll wrap it up by answering a couple of the questions I keep getting like, does the camera overheat? And how is the battery life? Both of which I've had zero issues. I'm not affiliated or sponsored by Canon. I'm simply a guy who's been using Canon cameras since 2007. Most recently, I've been using the 5D Mark IV and the Canon EOS R. If you're also interested in the Canon EOS R6, a lot of the content I cover will be very similar other than the resolution of the camera. Here we go. So the first question is, why the switch from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera? To start, let's talk about the electronic viewfinder, or EVF. For those of you who aren't familiar with the mirrorless camera system, one of the biggest differences from a DSLR and a mirrorless camera is the viewfinder. When I put the mirrorless camera up to my eye, I no longer see a mirrored reflection through the lens, but instead I see the actual live image. This is a game changer from my 5D Mark IV, as I'm now able to see live if my shot is too bright or too dark, or if the white balance is off. The EVF of the R5 is fantastic. It has a great resolution. You don't even see the pixels. It just looks like you're looking at a nice screen. It also has a fast refresh rate. It doesn't seem laggy or choppy. If you don't like the EVF getting brighter or darker as you change settings, Canon has also allowed for customization so you can make your EVF function like a DSLR. To do this, you simply go into the settings and your EVF will function like a DSLR's optical viewfinder. But I personally love being able to see my exposure live. One of the biggest reasons I love the R5 is the autofocus. It's truly something you have to see to believe. The R5 has multiple autofocus modes. Let's start with face and head detection. For portraits, as for most of the wedding day, this is where I now live. It is just so accurate. I put the camera in AI servo mode so that if the distance between me and my subject changes at all, the camera will account for it. It works absolutely perfectly. This is perhaps the biggest difference you will notice if you're coming from a DSLR. The camera is so smart, I can't even believe it. Here's a clip of my son running full speed shot with an 85 millimeter at f1.2. On one of my recent engagement sessions, the couple brought a black poodle puppy. I was super excited to use the camera's animal AF, so I quick flipped it from people detection to animal detection, and again, I was literally in disbelief. The dog had pitch black eyes tucked under tufts of fluffy black hair, and the R5 was able to find the head and eye of the dog walking towards me. Not a single shot was out of focus. If you forget to turn on the animal AF, the autofocus will look like this. But once enabled, the camera will quickly find the eye and the head of whatever animal you're trying to track. To fully test out the speed and accuracy of the R5's autofocus, I put it to the ultimate test, hummingbirds. There's nothing more quick, more random, or more speedy. I walked away completely blown away at the speed and accuracy of the autofocus. When you combine it with the high resolution, these images can be cropped way in to show the most detail in the feathers, the wings, the eyes, the claws. It is simply incredible. I have my camera customized so that if I roll the scroll dial on the back of the camera, it changes my AF focusing modes. The great thing about these other focusing modes is that they still face detect. So when a bride walks down the aisle, I set the autofocus mode to the large zone vertical, and then I switch it to the large zone horizontal when I'm shooting vertical photos. Being a prime lens photographer, I have always wanted to photograph a bride walking down the aisle with a 50 millimeter lens at f1.2. It was just one of my goals. I never took the risk though, because the moment is too important and the margin of error for focus too thin. 
After just a couple weddings though with the R5, I had full confidence in it. I finally photographed this processional using the vertical and horizontal AF zones at f1.2 and I am happy to report not one single photo was out of focus. I also want to note that the camera did not focus on any of the other faces of the guests because I had the autofocus zone set right to where the bride and the father were walking down the aisle. If you're interested in viewing any of the photos that I've been taking with this camera, click the link in the description to head over to our blog and you can view our recent posts. At tonight's senior portrait session, he mentioned he knew how to do a backflip. So I flipped on the 20 frames per second and fired away as he flipped over. And having the 20 frames per second allowed me to capture and freeze him at the perfect moment instead of a lot of really good moments, it allowed me to get just that perfect frame. Now here's a shot I took at 12 frames per second. It's just incredible how many frames you can get so you can pause that action exactly where you need it. And now here's the set of clips taken at 20 frames per second. I rarely use either of the high frames per second, but they're nice to have in my back pocket for the right moment. Before we jump in and discover the amazing low light focusing ability of this camera, I wanna quick invite you to subscribe to our channel. I'm currently in the works with a R5 versus R video, and then I'll be doing a review of the 85 millimeter F1.2 and the RF 15 to 35. So please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Now let's take a look at the amazing low light focusing ability of this camera. I took it out at night in the pitch black and I wanted to just see, can this camera focus when there's basically no light at all? It is pitch black outside and we are gonna test out the low light focusing ability of the R5. Here's my settings. Out here somewhere is a tree in my yard. I can't even see it myself. Let's see if the camera, oh, the camera just found it. Okay, it is pitch black outside. I can't see anything to the naked eye right now. We are at 51,000 half second exposure. This is just nuts. And the camera just was able to focus on its own on the treehouse. That test was maybe the most impressive test I've done yet with the R5. My eye couldn't even see the treehouse back in there and I handheld it with a half second exposure with a 50 millimeter lens at ISO 51,000, it was able to take a photo. With just a little noise reduction, this could easily be used for a small print or on social media. I've also been very impressed with the IBIS on the camera. Using an 85 millimeter lens and a 50 millimeter lens, I am able to take half second, third second exposures, handheld, no problem. And yes, when you're photographing people, you can't do that. But there are often situations when I'm taking shots of rings, when I'm taking shots of details, when I'm taking shots of landscapes or venues, dark at night, and being able to do that is a game changer. Before, when I photographed with these lenses, I would rarely go below 1 25th of a second just to avoid camera shake. When taking this photo, I was standing in a dark church. I wanted the photo to be extra sharp, so I photographed it at f8. With the IBIS of the R5, I was able to hand hold the camera at 1 6th of a second, so I could keep my ISO at only 1000. Having image stabilization on all of my lenses is a very big deal. One thing I was worried about with this camera is the file sizes. And yes, they are a little bit bigger, 50 megabytes instead of 40, but I actually love the extra resolution. There is so much detail in the photo that I often find myself smiling and shaking my head in disbelief as I go through portrait sessions and zoom in to the detail of the eye and the eyelashes. To show you the difference in resolution between the R5 and the R6, here are two straight out of camera JPEGs. This one is taken at the full 45 megapixels with the R5, and this one was taken at the medium JPEG 22 megapixels, also with the R5. The R6 is 20 megapixels, so it's very similar in terms of resolution compared to this image. Let's zoom in and see what type of resolution we have here. So when we zoom in here, here's 22 megapixels on this side, similar to the R6, and here's the full 45 megapixels of the R5. The R5 will have more resolution to allow you to crop and resize a little bit more, but the R6 will have plenty of resolution to crop some, and to be able to print very large. So I think for most people, 20 megapixels will be great. 
but if you're just looking for that little extra resolution, the 45 megapixels will give you that freedom. The high resolution of the R5 can be extremely useful when trying to capture animals in action. These hummingbirds were darting and flying all through the frame, so I decided to step back and take a wide shot knowing I'd be able to crop in. With the 46 megapixels of the R5, I have no problem doing an extreme crop as I still have plenty of resolution. I can still even see the individual feathers on the back of this bird. I knew it was gonna be really difficult to catch him landing because they come in so quick. So I shot it really wide knowing I would be able to crop. So let's go ahead and we'll crop this way in. And there we are with the resolution of the R5. It makes it possible to catch a bird landing on a branch because I can shoot it wide and then use the high frames per second to get just that right moment. This photo I took wide open at f2 and it is still tack sharp. The sun is shining right through his wings there. I wanted to bring it in a little bit closer. I could. I just love the way the sun is shining through his wings and I can see the individual little parts of his wing there of his feathers. Just simply beautiful. The dynamic range on the R5 is like nothing I've ever experienced before on a Canon camera. After using it for a month, I have now learned I can shoot for the highlights with full confidence I'll be able to bring back the shadows later. At yesterday's engagement session, we had the most beautiful sunset. I exposed this photo for the highlights of the sky. Then, with just a few clicks in Lightroom, I was able to bring back the shadows and create this stunning image. The subtle blues of the sky are retained without compromising the great contrast in the shadows of the greens or the detail in their faces. The R5 offers more customization than any Canon camera I've ever owned. One of the first customizations I made to my R5 was to add the histogram. The histogram is a graph that shows me the amount of bright areas and dark areas that are in my image. I often want to make sure the bright areas aren't blown as those are the difficult ones to recover in post. You can also change the size of the histogram so it doesn't take as much of your screen. I also turn on the 3x3 grid. This allows me when I'm composing portraits to get the subject's head centered in the frame. In addition to enabling the multi-controller to change AF points, I have also turned on the touch and drag focus. This is especially helpful when in the face and eye detection mode, because in addition to being able to switch between subjects that I am focusing on with the multi-controller, with my eye up to the EVF, I can also move my thumb around on the LCD screen to change what I'm focusing on, and it will continue to track whatever I touch. Even the manual focus has been improved on this camera. If you're ever photographing with a manual focus lens like a tilt shift, or if you want to be extra precise with a macro lens, I recommend turning on the focus indicator. This tool is especially helpful when you want to specify exactly where you want your focus to be. I also often use the six times and 15 times zoom. It makes nailing the focus so easy. One quick side note that I often get asked is calibrating your lenses to your camera. With the old DSLRs, we often micro-adjusted each lens to each camera to make sure that the autofocus points hit. That is gone with the R5. It focuses digitally using dual pixel technology, and so no longer do you have to calibrate any of your lenses. Also note that with the Canon control ring mount adapter, you can use all of your EF-S and EF lenses on your Canon R5 and Canon R6. I have found that with the AF capabilities of the new mirrorless cameras, the lenses work even better than they did on a DSLR. In my R5 versus 5D video, I talked about how much I liked the changes to the ergonomics. The camera has a great weight and feels fantastic even with the bigger lenses like the RF 85mm f1.2. It feels very comfortable in the hand. The buttons are exactly where they should be on a modern camera, in my opinion, as they allow me to easily change the settings without even thinking about it. Essentially, they moved all the buttons that were on the left side of the 5D to the right side on the EOS R5 and R6. This way you can still access them all while you're still shooting. With the camera up to my eye, I can change everything. Each button has many functions that can be assigned. The multi-controller, which you can now change how fast it moves the autofocus points, is in a very comfortable spot. Having a third control wheel is also amazing. Plus, you get the control ring on the RF lenses, and that's another bonus. Each dial has many functions that can be assigned. I've set mine to shutter, aperture, direct AF switching, and ISO. Shooting in full manual has never been easier, and it gives my photos a consistent look straight out of camera. 
The tilt-out screen is also very useful for high and low photos. I often use it for table setting photos and it can be used for self-portraits. Perhaps the largest reason to invest in the Canon R5 or R6 for professional photographers is its dual card slot option. Two card slots is a must for wedding photographers to protect against losing once-in-a-lifetime images to a corrupt memory card. The CF Express cards are more expensive than SD cards, but wow are they fast. I put raw images on my CF Express cards and backup JPEGs on my SD card. Two questions I've been asked a lot since buying this camera. How is the battery life in the Canon EOS R5 and does it overheat? I'm heading to a wedding right now so it's the perfect opportunity to let you know. I have a fully charged brand new battery in the camera. I'll let you know when the battery dies, how many hours, and how many photos I took with the battery. Also, it's about 88 degrees today and humid and so I'll let you know if there's any issues with overheating, but I can tell you right now, I've been photographing with the camera for over a month and the light or indicator hasn't come on one time. So that so far it's been a non-issue completely. Here we go. The floor's okay, dude, just a little bit there. Perfect. Dude, and then will you put foreheads together, just close eyes and kind of foreheads together right there. I am already overheating, so uh, the sports jacket is off and we are getting some water right now. But not a single issue with the R5. It worked flawlessly. All right, I just actually made it to the reception and I'm still on the first battery. Here's where we're at. The new battery that came with the camera lasted six hours and I took 1,373 photos with it. Well, I just finished a senior portrait session. I had a two-year-old LPE 6N battery in there. It was at 99% when I started and now it is at 71% with a shutter count of 298. The only way to realize how incredible this camera is and how easy it makes shooting is to hold it in your hand and start taking photos with it. The autofocus alone is worth the price of the camera. It's intuitive and instantly responsive. I can photograph running subjects at f1.2 and not miss a shot. Then you add in the IBIS, incredible files, great resolution, full customization, and you have one incredible camera. I highly recommend it to any professional photographer thinking about switching to mirrorless. I'll have links below where you can pick up the R5 and the R6 if you think it's the camera for you. Purchasing gear through my links really helps support my channel. I have now gone full mirrorless with the Canon R5 and I still own a couple R's. If you want to check out some of my work with these cameras, head on over to Instagram and follow at Shane Long Photography to see some of the photos that we've been taking. We have a lot more R5 and RF lens videos coming. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. If this video was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.